Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to do a really quick overview of how to get your Firebase account authentication set up with AppGyver. I'm not covering the specifics because I've already done that in some other videos. You can check out tons of tutorials on my channel as well as over at codelessfix.com. Today, I'm specifically covering some troubleshooting issues because I've had this question before. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the Auth tab in our AppGyver account or SAP Build Apps Community Edition. From here, you're going to enable authentication and make sure that everything here on this page, which isn't much, is set up, and your initial view is going to be Firebase authentication. Now, I've had people ask why it works in some platforms and not on others, and that is in the Data tab. So once you've done the previous steps, you then go to Data, and you're going to go to Configure Google Firebase. From here, you're going to enable this option, and then you're going to enable the option for each of the platforms you plan to build for, such as a web app, Android app, and iOS configuration. Now, I highly recommend at very least having the web app. It'll help when you're testing your AppGyver through the pre or your AppGyver app through the preview portal. But I also recommend just going ahead and getting this set up for all the platforms so you don't forget about it later. Now, you'll notice that there are a couple of things that you're going to need that are similar across these different options, but the idea here is they are specific to the platform. Now, we're gonna to go to our Firebase account and we're gonna to go to our project settings and general. When you're here, you'll already start to notice some of the things you may need, like a web API key. Now, all of these settings are going to be sensitive information, so you're not gonna to wanna to share these with people. But you'll notice in my sample app, I already have my web app ID right here. Now, let's go through actually getting these added. So some of the things like project name, project ID, project number are right here. But some of the, the settings that are specific to the platform are going to be down here. So what we'll do is we'll go through these Android and web app settings together, and then we'll create the iOS one together as well. So I've already added the web app, but all you need to do is click Add App, choose the platform, and then go through the setup instructions, filling in your relevant information. Once they've been added, they appear here. So the web app that I previously created, you'll see that we have our app ID, and then down here, we have a bunch of information like API key, auth domain, all of these other things like measurement ID, message sender ID, storage bucket. You'll notice if we go over here, we have the web app configuration where we have web app ID, API key, message sender ID, storage bucket, auth domain. A lot of these things are specified here. So you just bring all of those relevant details over. Now it is a little different for Android and iOS. So once you've added them through this step here, you'll click to download the Google services.json file and you'll try to open this with either Notepad or uh, you can use Visual Studio Code like I have here. Now it's the same step as before, except you're pulling it out of this JSON file. So you'll notice we have an API key here and all of these other settings, client ID, etc. So we can go over here, find our Android app. You'll see we have the ID, API key, client ID. And then we just repeat the process for iOS. So what we're gonna do, we'll click add app. Then we find iOS. Now here you're going to want to actually build out and add the correct information, but I'm just putting some basic content. You're going to wanna to make sure you fill out the correct information for your app. Then once you've done this, you'll be able to download this info plist file, and then you'll go through the remaining instructions if you're going through a different platform. But the idea is once you've done this, if you lose that file, you should be able to still access it from right here. So we'll click download the plist file again, and you'll see we have it right here, which you can open in whatever platform you prefer. And you'll see you have your API key and your app ID. You'll see it's a Google app ID. So obviously you're gonna want the Apple one, which was in the previous page, if I'm not mistaken. So you can get that added. You'll notice this is the bundle that we added previously. So you want this to match what you're using in the Apple App Store, or if you're doing Google Play and the Google Play Store. But you'll see you have this information here. You would then go over, add those options here, and make sure that you save. And then you should be able to begin testing your application using that relevant platform. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.